again, you know, when, when, when I've seen grown men cry, that, and listen, I've interviewed some of the most reprehensible characters that are on earth, and the thing is, now they're dead. You know, i got to tell you something. When someone with no morals and no qualms about having killed or having done this or that breaks down and weeps over literally the monsters being made, that was the subtitle of my book, Today's Technology, Tomorrow's Monsters, the, I, I think I would rewrite that subtitle if there's ever a genetic Armageddon 2, which I doubt, and I would say yesterday's technology, today's uh, uh, monsters, you know, because, again, there is nothing new under the sun. So I maintain that unless you understand how technologically advanced the ancients were and the judgment that fell upon them, and I'm talking prior to uh, uh, Noah's flood, I'm talking about the stuff that is myth legend and uh, oral tradition when the gods fought against each other and the god prevailed, the god prevailed, then I think it puts it into context. And, uh, you know, again, I, and people talk to you, they talk to me, they say, well, we like all the stuff you talk about, but don't talk to us about Jesus. Don't talk to us about God because we're atheists and agnostics. Uh, you're soon to be confronted with the realm, those of you who hold that position, that will literally cause your hearts to fail. And it will be interesting, won't it, Tom, when a synthoid, a synthetic being or basically an antiquoid, that's something from antiquity, comes into their living room and basically says, uh, what's for dinner? And they look hungrily and longingly at the person that's uh, sitting before the TV. And I'm not being melodramatic. The point is, is that it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, even even in Cancun, they have found now people with their hearts ripped out in the ceremonial caves of, of the Mayans, okay? And the old uh, habits have come back on the scene. The old demons are reincarnating themselves in contemporary man. And woe unto the inhabitants of Earth. Woe, woe, well, woe. And that's, and, that's and, where we're and, at. And, and as an example of the possibility that they can come back, first of all, it was I think it's prophesied that they will return. Um, and, and we'd have to remind listeners that most of the references, almost, you know, 99% of the references we've made tonight are from uh, just reputable news sources that anybody that can, they can go out and Google to see that we're not making this up. But as an example that they can come back, just uh, six months ago, blood was extracted from the bone of a dinosaur that scientists are insisting, Steve, is 80 million years old. Okay, so this thing was back there under the reign of the fifth watcher, right, uh, Lucifer, yep. the reptilian. When he fell, the dinosaurs were wiped out. Well, okay, even if nobody buys that, this was blood from the, the bone of a dinosaur they say is 80 million years old. Well, Nephilim, according to the histories, would have been very recent compared to that, uh, making clonable material from dead biblical giants feasible and the technology to resurrect the extinct species, it doesn't even have to be supernatural is the point that I'm making. Could it be supernatural? Sure. I'm a biblical literalist, man. I believe in the authority of the Word of God. But what I'm saying to try to reach across that realm to those agnostics you're talking about that say, don't tell us about Jesus, um, these things existed in relatively close times compared to what scientists are telling us about the blood of this dinosaur and the technology to resurrect extinct species has been perfected in the last 24 months. Cloning methods are being studied right now for bringing back Tasmanian tigers, woolly mammoths, other extinguished creatures. National Geographic uh, ran a fantastic article, May 2009, a special report titled Recipe for a Resurrection, in which they were quoting Hendrik Pointer of McMaster University. He's an authority on ancient DNA. And he served actually as a scientific consultant for the music uh, for the movie Jurassic Park, and it was an interesting article because he said I laughed when Steven Spielberg said that cloning extinct animals was inevitable, but I'm not laughing anymore. This is going to happen. It is just a matter of working out the details. Anybody that wants to Google recipe for a resurrection, National Geographic, these are the scientists who are saying that these long extinct species are and can be, as long as they can find intact DNA, can be resurrected. Well, Steve, I don't think they have to even wait for intact DNA. I think prophetically speaking, there's something entirely different operating here. I wish we had 
uh, two more hours, maybe we can do another uh, two hours to finish this. But uh, but the technology, whether they buy the prophetic side of it or not, if they're saying don't talk to us about Jesus, man, for crying out loud, at least look at the science. The science is there. These creatures existed. The science to bring them back exists. And whether you like it or not, they're coming back, or they're already here, or they're coming back in phases. I have a theory about that, too. But the ramifications of using science to revive extinct animals, Nephilim, uh, may also play a role in the coming of the Antichrist. Uh, well, and thanks, that, too, that, that we need to cover, and, and we'll check our schedules, but, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have another two-hour, Lord willing. But, Tom, you know this that even the intellectual dishonesty in the anthropological community, they'll try and put a name on even the bones that have been found yeah. of Gigantopithecus or Meganthropus or, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, idyllic uh, scientific-sounding name. But the thing is, the reason that the skeletal remains of the giants of antiquity are hoarded guarded and protected is because they don't want the basic knowledge out there or the DNA to fall into what they consider the enemy's hands because once they become exposed, then guess what? It's a whole new ballgame. Didn't Jesus say his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? His people. And, and by the grace of God, ladies and gentlemen, it's the knowledge that Tom Horn's presenting to you. And I don't know if you know this, but the guy's a walking encyclopedia, Mr. Footnotes, and that's a compliment. The thing is, is that you <laughs> absolutely are getting a hyperdose of real reality, and the only way to deal with this stuff is through the power of the living God. Now, there are those, Tom, that think that they can go out and take this stuff on. When these things hunt by DNA, okay, and I've talked, and we'll go into that sometime together, the harmonics of DNA, the actual song. And didn't the sun just basically somebody took the sun and, and played the, the beautiful haunting melody of the sun? Well, hey, I, I've told people for 34 years, every star has a name, every star has a song. And I'm not talking about Hollywood. And they just, they just recorded the sun's uh, beautiful, beautiful noise. And so guess what? Everybody's got a song to sing. Unfortunately, they're just letting the wrong conductor uh, orchestrate them. Uh, absolutely right. You know, you mentioned a moment ago, and for the life of me, I can't right now think of the science, scientific museum that has been hoarding those giant bones all these years. Um, uh, you know, they're in the Smithsonian? The Smithsonian, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, they're... Uh, early in American history, there is very significant, and some of it, I mean, is very substantiated history about the mounds, you know, where uh, many of the giant bones were buried here in the United States of America and how quickly uh, those things, you know, were collected and taken to the Smithsonian and then, of course, from there, uh, they're covered up and we don't hear anything more about it. Right. Listen, I'll even give you one better than that. A number of years ago, I was on Coast to Coast and some people from Pennsylvania I think it was either Pennsylvania or Ohio, who called me and said that they were plowing a field and they turned up a giant skeleton. They went into the local post office and said, boy, you won't believe what we found. Well, the postmaster evidently contacted the FBI. The FBI shows up, takes the skeleton, and basically yeah. threatens them because most people don't understand there's a Native American Antiquity Act that every bone that's found, doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the species, is automatically considered Native American. Hey, Tom, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Horn, give out your website, Tom. 